compañeros. Welcome to another edition of the Simulator Partners Podcast. I am Carlos El Chicón, your host, and this is episode 254. We're only two episodes away. Two, one, two. Count them from episode 256. We're counting down to that. We're looking forward to it. If you haven't gotten your thoughts on 2022 in, please, please do so. Or again, shout outs. We are expanding that to shout outs. So we'd love to get uh, that detail from you as well. So this episode, 254, we have a special guest, Mr. Kevin Martin, all the way from Minnesota. Hey, Kevin, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so not only are you a special guest, but we, you are going to be a special guest for two episodes. So we are, we are going back to back with you, Kevin. Uh, you've put together two pieces, uh, two pieces of functionality, I'll call them, uh, that I think our listeners might be interested in. And uh, so I thought, you know what, let's let's get you on. Let's talk about them. And but then we're going to break it up into two episodes, you know, for just for smaller, smaller consumption purposes. So in this episode, we want to talk about a, uh, a process that you've written called SP develop. Right. And this is ultimately going to be it's a bit more of a. Um, uh, um, a code kind of an automated code review process, if you will, for for SQL, for Microsoft SQL Server store procedures, right? As the, Not as only the just store procedures, but but table design um, and okay. indexes, practicing and naming conventions. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay, so there are some there are some additional pieces in there. So that's what we're going to focus on for today, and so uh, we think that's like, going to be enjoyable. Uh, before we jump into that. I do have a couple of shout outs that I want to give. And as always, compañeros, if I mess up your name, please uh, forgive me. So shout outs for today. Mike Boko, Boyko, Tanya McAllister, Lindsay Kelly, Vicky Liu, Felicia Ani uh, Anza? Anza, John Coleman, E. Linwood Thomas, Alan L. Pickett. So I like that. So I got I got the Carlos L. Chacon. I got the Alan L. Pickett. Don Askey, Stephen Al Ebedai, Alex Keeney, Eduardo Cervantes. Hope you're still enjoying the West Coast, my friend. Lindsay Mashburn, uh, happy trails to you. Mike Shore, Emma Bradbury, Shannon Bannister, Lindsay Pippin, Anthony Romanello, uh, Kayla Coleman, Alicia Kern, and Jonathan Cramblett. Who, compañeros, right, like you, went to sequelatorpartners.com slash t-shirt for a very small fee. Got himself a SQL Data Partners t-shirt. So you can be uh, like him. Take a peek. sequelatorpartners.com slash t-shirt or t-shirts, whichever you prefer. Because uh, maybe with more. Or without the hyphen. That's right. I, I think both of them work. I, I go with no hyphen, but yes. That's because you're wrong. <laughs> well, there you go. Harsh. Welcome, welcome to my life. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, with that, right? So we are coming up uh, on uh, the, so the at least here in the United States, right? Seasons are starting to change, right? Starting to get to the end of the year. Uh, so as you get to the end of the year, you're thinking about budgets, you're thinking about projects that you may want to get over the finish line uh, for this year. If you need a helping hand. Check us out, sequelatorpartners.com. We'd be very interested in helping, talking with you about uh, your Power BI needs, Power Apps. If there are some pieces in the SQL, uh, SQL Server database you need help with, we can assist there too. Whether you need us to do some heavy lifting or just a light touch, uh, we'd be happy to help there. So for today's episode, you can take a peek at sequelatorpartners.com slash spdevelop. Is going to be our show notes for today, and uh, we I know off the top that uh, Kevin has got a wiki that we're going to point going to point folks to, right? Okay, so uh, just on crossing all my T's and dotting my I's, right? So Kevin, you work for Emergent Software. We talked about you being up in uh, in Minnesota, and you put together. Now you 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 did before we started recording. You, so you suggested that your company was involved perhaps a little bit, but this was kind of your brainchild, it feels like, 
uh, to put together this uh, this SP develop. Um, right. So so maybe yeah, take take us through this. Uh, introduce it and why it kind of became your baby here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So SP develop. Um, you know, I started with a consulting company. I think now four years ago. Um, and and the the one of the co-owners, the CTO of the company, Mark Badgema, asked me to, hey, we don't really have like any best practices for like databases, and and it's it's kind of strange. The more him and I kind of talked about that, is like, wow, our our naming convention, style format, just everything like matched almost like probably ninety five percent of everything that we had was the same. And he goes, can you write this down for us? Like, I, you know, we need <laughs> something that's like practice for. You know, we we have a lot of software developers. Our our company's first and foremost a software development company where, you know, 90% of of everything we do is software development, custom senior level kind of software developers. But a lot of places where, you know, they can fall down, they might be excellent, you know, C sharp programmers, um, or JSON or React or all the other languages out there. But you know, the the thing, you know, of 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 kind of database development is the part where you can get in the most amount of trouble for performance and stuff like that. You can have the you know coolest functions and C sharp code, but you know once once your database isn't modeled correctly, or you know you wrote a stored procedure where it's non sargable and all the other you know things that we know that could be bad, is we can't have like a DBA you know doing code reviews for like every single project that we have going on. So you know he's like, hey, can you write up a best practice for that? And I'm like, well, I'll do one a little bit better. I'll actually create. Um, a stored procedure that we can just execute against these databases in, in kind of the style of, you know, the Brent Ozar's first responder kits or Eric Darling's where, you know, you execute it and it's going to give you back some results of potential findings. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of like kind of code smells and stuff like that out there, but nothing that is like built right to run inside of a database that I found. So um, I got to working on that, started, um, you know, building some checks and fleshing it out. And I started, you know, I just used Markdown within GitHub to create the wiki. So as I make different code, you know, um, you know, um, you know, SQL database code checks, and then I'd go and write something up about it. Um, it, it has been, it's been like, a, a long while where I go in and just say, okay, well, I know this is the best practice and I just write a little blurb about it. But then right. when I perform like code reviews, like it's all, what I'm able to do is just put like a little link into the wiki on the code review. So I don't have to kind of keep retyping the same thing. So it's just a way for our company to go um, reference back this one kind of central, you know, version of what we consider the best practice, you know, it's, and, and you know, right. Other people might like camel case or Pasco case or snake case. And, you know, the, 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 what I built, uh, you know, it's open source, it's GitHub went to the owner of the company and, I'm, and he's like, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and open source this. And that allows anybody to be able to fork it and change any of these other type of naming conventions or anything that, you know, some other company or some other development company wanted to do, but do it a little bit different and then just put it out there for the community. Sure. That way, they're not constantly constantly getting flagged for stuff that is, yeah. you know, kind of known issues, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so very good, right? So, I think that's awesome. Um, and ultimately, what drew me to that uh, that concept is the ability to, yeah, automate some of those pieces, right? Can we think about them out loud and then and then put them in, um, yep. and and run them so that you can. On a regular basis, you know, and I, you know, we, you, you kind of said the assessment process, but let's say I'm not a, you're not a consultant, right? So the folks who are listening, most of them aren't, aren't consultants, but they're, they're at their, you know, their place of business. They can still run this and, you know, come up with a list of, <laughs> yep. a list of issues. I, I laugh because I, I was thinking, well, if they needed a, some extra leverage, right? It's always nice to be able to reference somebody else's suggestion as to why this should be the case, right? So now you've got, uh, you know, another, another option should you need, uh, uh, anyway, some some leverage. So, so the SP develop, right, is the, is the stored procedure, right? You can, you, you know, you crack it open, you download it again, you mentioned like the Blitz stuff, there's gonna be a larger procedure that's gonna go in there and check. Um, and again, right, so right from the wiki, you can just, like any good, uh, store procedure, just run it from 
or run the run the procedure itself. All of the parameters have defaults, right? Um, but in, so in terms of getting started, uh, would you suggest that that's how folks just crack it open, run it, and kind of see the result? Or how how would you would uh, in, again in the mindset that I'm using this as a from a I don't know if audit is the right word, right? But a a, a review process. Yeah. How, how would you suggest folks get started? It is like like it could be. Um, so even and I've had the experience with our software developers running it for the first time, and I've kind of built things and added extra like parameters. So like the first time, like like just like I don't know, maybe like a couple months ago, um, a software developer and the CTO, you know, he's really great with databases also. So he's like, he's like, well, he was a little bit shocked because there were so many results, but you know, there are some checks that have like lower priority versus, you know, medium critical and, you know, high priorities and stuff like that. So, so one of the things I did, I did create a new parameter recently. You could just run, just execute SP develop and it'll come back, but you know, it might be a little bit of information overload for somebody looking at it for the first time. That's maybe not as strong as a true, like, you know, database developer who's done it for, you know, a career. It, it, one of the recommendations I have recently put on there is to say, you know, there is a, a priority filter, priority or higher filter of like higher or better, where there are a lot of like low, like if if you have a certain type of like naming column or your joining table or something where, you know, if you use like, don't use newspaper and, subs, you know, and person use like subscription or something. So try to come up with a with more logical name, like that gets flagged a lot where it could kind of look overwhelming to somebody looking at it for the first time. So there is a parameter and in the wiki, there is a stat like a part, like how do I run? And then I say, if this is your first time, you know, you might want to try like where parameter is higher. So you're getting kind of really the true things that really might give you problems down the line as far as performance, or maybe you're running this because you are having some performance issues and you might find you know, unsargable queries and, you know, different type of things that's probably not best practice. Maybe all your foreign keys don't have indexes or something like that. Um, it, so it can be overwhelming. So you might want to just stick to like the critical and higher, higher above or something. Right. Um, so you mentioned, um, right, th th so, that, so that I can get this list. Well, let me, before I get there. So, um, so how do you go about, um, deciding what should be a best practice right what what's the what's that look like for you there's there's a lot of like you know if 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 you've been around in the sql community you know there's been talk about you know a lot of things that's generally accepted best practices and a lot of those are in there um with with more or less the majority of like true people like looking towards masters like brent and eric and stuff like that who who you can show and prove that, hey, I know you wrote this this way, but look at it this way, where you can actually prove to somebody, um, like mostly our software developers, is like, this is why you would do this or why you don't want to use, you know, no lock in almost every single instance kind of thing like that. So a, a lot of those are are just what the what the industry, you know, is going to have out there as like best practices. But then you know, you completely get into things that are like stylistic, right? That's like naming conventions on columns and tables. Do you use an S at the end or not an S? Or um, sure. you know, do, you, do you tibble tables or do you tibble even your indexes? Like one of the things that we've changed with this is, you know, every, I, can't, I think it started from Eric, went to Brent. And then the first time, like when I was taking a lot of Brent's courses and stuff like that, just to give myself a nice refresher on things, you know, he started not using Roman numerals in front of indexes. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? We don't tibble tables. We don't put TBL in front of tables any, anymore. And a lot of like SSMS and stuff we work with, you could just hover your mouse over there and a lot of stuff strongly typed. So there's, you know, not going to be a lot of issues like, you know, oh, we have to put PK or IX or, you know, something on all of these. Like that's one of the right. things that we've adopted is, you know, really kind of get rid of tibbling on, on, on indexes and stuff. But mm. It's completely cool. And, you know, and everything we have is if the database has it originally, use that format, right? Don't start doing anything new in there. So, so a lot of it is subjective. It's just what, you know, what is like best practice that it seems like has gotten us into the least amount of problems. And, 
you know, do other reviews with other people in the company to say, yeah, you know what, this makes, you know, the most amount of sense. So a lot of it is going to be kind of consensus on our data team, you know, with other things that are out inside the industry that we've kind of come to the, 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 like, this is just what we do. Yes. And, you know, and this is where the challenge then becomes, right? Is that it's nice, it's great to have a tool, right? But then you're going to have to, you know, to change as needed or to, to, to adapt, right? To, you know, to your model. Um, but it is, uh, but one thing that I think is, uh, is, is worth mentioning is that always easier to change something that's there. It's much harder to stare at the blank screen, right? And, and yep. start there. So, um, right when you know when the community has something like this, and I think this is, you know, this is great, is that you at least have a starting place, right? You don't have to start from zero, and uh, you know, and and you know, I mean, even you know, again on the wiki, right? He's talking about, hey, you want to do this yourself? Here's how you'd go do it, right? And kind of encouraging that, you know, that model almost. Now you'll you'll I'll forget. Let's see. I guess I, I have the links. So I'm gonna I'm clicking on GitHub here. So 641 commits, right? Do you have a lot of folks uh, helping you? Are you submitting changes or um... just internally? Um, uh, a, a bunch of people have like downloaded it on the insights and using it. And I I I've even checked out some of the people who forked it. So maybe they didn't know that they could just like download the stored procedure each time. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of people are making a whole lot of changes. I haven't gotten any pull requests from outside of the outside of the uh, repo, except for just internally. Yeah, just sure. DBA internally. Sure, sure, sure. Right. Yeah, I guess, I guess I should ask. I mean, it sounds like are you open? Are you open to that? Should uh, someone have us on their two cents? I know it's kind of yeah. a you're opening up a can of worms, right? You know, where <laughs> um, I know Brent even talked about that. It's like, it's great, but then you've got people who have the expectation that someone's going to review it and decide what to do with it, right? Yep. If, if I mean, if it's subjective, you know, if somebody comes in and says, well, you know, here, I, I here's a pull request. I made everything camel case and you have everything Pascal case or, you know, you uh, don't allow special right. character, you know, something that it's like a formatting or column naming or something. I'll just say, you know, that's probably great, but, you know, this is exactly, you know, what makes the most amount of sense for you to fork it and start changing those kind of subjective things. But if if people that like there are a lot of checks, you know, especially ones that are more kind of a SQL parser because SQL does not have a parser. Right. So the most of the stuff that you're doing is like with the very simple regex to try finding patterns inside like stored procedures. So um, like. If 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 somebody could come up and just make those type of changes and it and it is like a best practice or like something that a check that hasn't been written yet that just no one has gotten to. I haven't gotten to, you know, I'm 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 working on billable hours as a consultant. Right. I want those right. more. But and it's great because I think I'm going to have this next week in the first time in probably like a year to actually dedicate almost this next week of my time you know, to be able to do a lot of these type of things. And, you know, one of the things I am going to be changing is, is to take how I wrote it is every single like entry on the wiki is like, Hey, here's what's wrong. Instead of looking at it, like, here's just go ahead and read this as a best practice, best practice document. And then inside here, here's like potential issues. So like, I am going to kind of make it probably this week, go in and make it a little bit more readable. So like, a digestible for like a software developer. You could look at it like, like I have nothing about schema uses, right? Like, wh sure. you know, why would you want to use schemas and stuff? Because I don't have any, you know, potential issues <laughs> that is going to get checked on there. But I actually would probably want to get something codified in some best practice that you know people, software developers, could look like. When do we want to use some type of you know schemas on our application? So, yeah, is I, I'm I am completely open to to people changing, but, you know, I am going to be kind of like, well, yeah, that, that would be great for you and your company. So, you know, forking, it might be better if you got anything that I could pull back. That is like, you know, Hey, maybe, you know, you're looking for really wide tables or something like that, that, well, oh, that's a great one. Let's add that. So everybody else can in the community could, could, uh, you know, repull that, that new check or something. So there you go, compañeros, right? So if you're if you are timely and you're listening to this uh, podcast soon after it comes out, 
right? Then you can get uh, with Kevin. Tell him Carlos sent you, and uh, you know maybe maybe he'll get that requested a little bit faster. <laughs> Man, all of a sudden, all this uh, pressure. You know, Kevin's like, I'm never coming back on this podcast again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Already contractually obligated for one more episode. So too late for that. <laughs> We've got you for one more. That's right. Yep. Got you for... get, him, get him on the hot seat. My, get, uh, hot seat. my computer's messing up. I, I have to stop. I don't know. Uh... <laughs> That's funny. I joked and said that that was my... Uh... I pretend like I'm having problems so I can leave client tough client client uh, meetings. <laughs> right. I've never <laughs> used that. <laughs> okay. Well, very good. Um, yeah. So so awesome. Um, so I'll admit that I need to get in and play with this just a little bit more. Um, I uh, I would like to get my hands on it uh, you know, a, a bit more, but I but I do think I do see some some value there and uh in, in terms of being able to you know put in some consistency it's always nice to be able to give something that again that's repeatable back to the developers and give them feedback and so i can see a lot of a lot of value there yeah one quick question i've got uh yeah. there is a parameter bring the pain yes. for running against more than 50 databases i'm kind of curious yeah. uh how long does it normally take to run against a database um such that we're bringing the pain at 50. Right. And that's the, that's the, that's one of those, it depends like, um, <laughs> you know, of course you can oh, I'm sorry, that, that, that answer's not allowed. How big Kevin. the database <laughs> is, our, our soft, the way that we utilize this internally is, you know, you're really just working on one database or you have one project. Mm -hmm. Um, right. when you want to do the multiple like database and, you know, you have tons of, ta you know, that's when you're going to want to do it. Like we, like we've had some salvage projects where we just need to do, you know, a code review of like what somebody else built and they're coming to us going, Hey, we think we chose a wrong partner to build this and the database. So where we can run that against is it's just kind of like, Hey, make sure you're doing this like outside hours. Almost everything is hitting the system tables, um, mm -hmm. you know, with the metadata and the store procedures and table names and column names and index names. But there are a couple um, functions that go and look for data that should be encrypted. So sometimes, like when we're you know working with a new client, right? And we get in there and and it's like ah crap, you know this they they have passwords and clear text, and I need to tell somebody, hey, you know, so I'll escalate it internally and say, hey, there's exposed passwords here, you know, just to get it on the record that I see it and I've I'm telling, I tell the client about it. So like one of them in there will look for columns name password or SSI or credit card and look to see if it's like, you know, if it's 11 characters and not like, you know, a nice big long string, then we're going to know that there's probably no encryption on like a SSI or something like that. So those right. will get into the data and start, you know, you know, so if it's a massive table, it might take a while. So you kind of have to know when you're going in doing it is like, well, this might be an after hours or oh, dark 30 type of thing to run this when there might be a maintenance window or something. Yeah, so public service announcement, right? So, so stating the stating the obvious. Uh, always start on the development server, right? Uh, when you're right. when you're trying something new, Absolutely. right? <laughs> <laughs> I run it in production all the time for new clients. Um, if it's you know if it's hundreds of tables and like like I would go. I do not like. It it is it is generally very quick to run. Very quick to me is like five, ten, fifteen seconds at the most. So at the most, it's it's hitting system tables. It's you know, it's it's doing no locks when it you know can, you know it, when it's when it's not like interfering with anybody querying stuff. It might be putting schema locks on some stuff, doing like selects and system tables. But like I myself do it in production there we during go. business hours. Sure. There we go. Yeah, I guess a quick question I had um, is, you know, looking at some of the checks, the actual code for it, do you ever feel like trying to parse SQL inside of SQL starts to become a little bit too tedious or difficult? Because like, yeah. f first there's the one check where it's like, all right, let's check for plurals. And so I, I see that if someone has a table ending in the name platypus, it knows that that's not a plural. You know, and you have to have all these all these uh, words in there. But then the other is like, 
the code for checking for reserved names and having to write a SQL query that quote delimits all the quote escapes all of the reserved names. It just seems like a, a challenge. So since you work with developers, have you ever thought about moving some of that code to C sharp or something else or no? Yep. Yep. Um and that is the limitation, right? Like, you know, of course when I start this, you got lofty goals going, you know what? Sure. Like, I can look at open source SQL parsers and I think I could build that inside SQL itself. Um, you know, so so I had ideas that, you know, I could maybe do something like that where build a build a better mouse trap, but you know, it's you just got very crappy kind of tools to be able to parse out SQL yeah. SQL. And like I've been thinking and this is why this isn't something like used for like a SQL linter and like full blown, like you would use this like in your CI CD pipeline where you're going to kick back an error if something is just not right. Right. You know, you, you guys have had folks on, on, on your podcast talking about like script Dom or SQL Dom. Uh -huh. Right. That's the tool that you actually want to use for it. And, and I, I actually, you know, my career, I, I have been a software developer my entire career for, you know, 20 some years, but, um, like I have thought of of doing something where, you know, you know, using something or building something I've talked. I mean, we're a software development company, so, you know, we've had that talk about like, is this like a product or a free product that we can put out? And like we've definitely thought of those those type of things. But I mean, just like I said, like it's seriously going to be like a first week where I'm in between projects because we've been right. you know pretty darn busy is like I'm actually getting some time to do it. So it has been on the back burner. but of of possibly doing something else or or using some type of plugin inside um like Azure Data Studio instead of SSMS or something because it seems like right. that's a lot of things are going and plugins that I probably will look at that in the future to see but I mean I've even looked at okay do I just make this a CLR but I'm like no I hate CLRs and you know it's usually right. the first check is you have CLRs <laughs> that's, a, that's a check against you oh you need a CLR to check all this stuff so right right Definitely a hundred percent. That is its weakness of the limitations that you're going to do. And you have to just make a table. I mean, I seriously just went out and I went all the way up to like, you know, seven letter or 10 letter words to find all the words that end in S and just put that in a big old string array that says not in or not exists or whatever it is. So, you know, they don't have any false positives because it's like status ends in an S and how many, you know, account status tables do you have that, I didn't want people getting inundated the first time they right. run it going, oh, well, no, it's okay because it is an S, but it's not a plural S. It's a, it's a singular word that ends in an S. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, and what, this is one of the things that's so great, again, about community is that, uh, right, Kevin, even just you, as you explained that, I can see kind of the pain of having to go through that, through that process. And so we are we are glad that you have uh, again kind of started that started that process for us, uh, so that we don't have to write write our own and then you know deal with all the status columns. So <laughs> very cool. Okay, so um, yeah, so take a peek. We will in the show notes uh, link to uh, the wiki uh, for SP Develop, and you know from there you can download it, take a peek at it, and uh, and let us know what you think. Um, very interested in getting some of that, you know, th that feedback, and I'm sure Kevin would be interested in getting it as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, final thoughts here on SP Develop? To give it a try. Probably. Yeah, it seems. Yeah, it seems it it's a neat idea. Yeah. There, there's different areas, so there's. I kind of have it broken up to naming conventions, table conventions, data type conventions. SQL code conventions and then possible data issues. So there's different areas of different things that it's going to check for for you. There you go. And my recollection is that you can skip some of those checks. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There, there is there is a skip check, I, and I did just end in. Um, I just added a functionality parameter that is like just pass in like one check ID or a comma delimited list of comma of of IDs you want to check. So you can do onesie twosies. Or you can have um, a table that has a list of the checks you want to get skipped on all check IDs or on the table or on the schema or on the server. So you could have a centralized, if you wanted to use link servers, you can have like one link server for like all your different test dev prod environments, but you only want to have them 
blocked on here because you looked at it and you said, nope, that's actually okay. It, it'll generate an insert statement for you so you can just copy paste and insert that one check into the skip check table. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So take a, take a look, you know, a little bit of right there. Here's how it kind of gets uh, put together. But uh, sounds like, it, you know, there some, so some thought has been put into making this a little bit easier for you. And, um, and so that's, that's super nice. Awesome. Well, Kevin, thanks so much for being on with us today. If folks want to get in touch with you, how can they do so? Uh, you can go ahead and just go to kevinmartin.tech website, but I'm all over the social medias. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and befriend me and uh, follow me or even connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to chat with anybody. There we go. And Mr. Eugene? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at SQLGene. And Mr. Fiesel wasn't here when we started, uh, so I I, <laughs> I don't mean to rain on his parade, but I have a feeling that his social media can be found at a certain Dairy Queen in Minnesota. Oh, no, no, that's gone. You can't oh, get it there gone. anymore. Oh, Instead, what you have to do is you have to call uh, SP Develop with bring the pain equals two, and then that'll give you the details. Oh, my gosh. Hey, How did you know go. about that hidden parameter? <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem with open source you can read the code oh yeah <laughs> isn't that the, the most recent fork there that you got there kevin i think i just saw one pop up right. there you go <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> oh awesome okay very good so thank company energy you can reach me on linkedin i'm at carlos el chacon thanks for tuning in to this episode episode 254 and we'll see you on the sequel trail bye now partner.